Okay. So the next paper, uh, it's called Exploration Among <coughs> Unwithin Plotos in Greedy Best First Search and Masataro Sagi's Perception. Uh, hello, thank you for the introduction. I'm Masataro, and uh, the main topic today is the analysis of the diversification of greedy best first search. And I propose a new method in this field. Um, so diversification means uh, is exactly the same thing as exploration and is e more equivalent to unbiasing the search behavior. And uh, the new method is um, the first effective uh, the fractal algorithm ever. Um, so let's talk about search diversification. So imagine you are writing a new research paper and you want to submit it to somewhere, some conference like AAAI. And so this is the initial state. You have a heuristic value of 5 and you are running a greedy best search. And the next step, you have two options like submitting a paper or playing a video game. But clearly, a uh, heuristic value 4 is better than 8. So the greedy best search identifies that you have to submit the paper first. But in the next step, in the rebuttal phase, uh, there are another two options. The first one is fighting the reviewer, and another one is persuading the reviewer. And obviously, fighting the reviewer is uh, not a good idea, but the heuristic somehow tells you that you want to do this. <laughs> in which case, your paper gets rejected. <laughs> but, you know, uh, the true goal is to get the paper accepted by pursuing the reviewer. So what's happening here is that the, the in greedy best search and, the, and in the satisfying search, the heuristic value may be misguiding because um, it is uh, basically usually the inadmissible heuristics. So the search diversification is an art of how not to, tra how not to trust uh, the heuristic value. And like introduce some randomness in the search algorithm and choose the correct choice somehow. Uh, here's the preliminaries. Um, assert, we assume that the search algorithm can be described by the sorting strategy. Uh, so this is a sorting key for the open list in the lexicographical um, order. And there is an asterisk in the bottom, in the last element of the sorting strategy, which is default strategy, which should be either FIFO or LIFO or random. Bec this e exists for all, every open list implementation because it, can, it should be either uh, Q or stack or something like that. And there's a plateau, which is a set of nodes that are tied in terms of the default tie-breaking. Um, another preliminary is a type-based type uh, search uh, in proposed in AAA14. Um, this is a random selection from the buckets with key uh, values, uh, like G value and H value. These vectors uh, form a key, and every time you expand a node, you pop from the random uh, bucket. And another one is alter alternation queue, which uh, maintains multiple queues and expanding the alternating manner. Huh. So the background. Um, now, recently, there are a bunch of search diversification algorithms are proposed, like diverse B BFS, or the Monte Carlo random walk, or the Ypsilon Grady, or blah, 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 or blah, blah, blah. But we need a clearer or less ad hoc way, somehow, to understand their behavior. Well, you want, I want to do that. Um, so what's in common? Well, most, in most cases, they use, uh, uh, the, you use the notion of heuristic error, which is the error which is a difference between the H value and the H star value, which is a perfect heuristics. And they say something like overestimation or underestimation. But is this view sufficient for heuristic search, especially in a miscible heuristic search? That's my question. And actually, uh, well, immediately, um, I found that so the heuristic error can be plotted in this three-dimensional uh, grid uh, plot. In this plot, the z, z axis is a number of nodes with a particular heuristic value and a perfect heuristic value. 
and there's a h equal h star lying in this in this space, and yes, these are overestimation and underestimation. But you immediately notice that if you cut this curve surface with the uh, x-axis or the y-axis, these errors are actually two-dimensional. It has an orthogonal direction. And we, we, we started to call one of these as inter-plateau error and another one as intra-plateau error. Inter-plateau inter error is follows, as follows. The, small, the node with the smallest h star value may have different h value. Um, so in this case, selecting the minimum h is not always good because it may uh, expand the high h star value. So it is reasonable to diversify the order with regard, uh, diversify the expansion order re with regard to the heuristic value. So the examples here is the diverse VSFR search or the type GVS and so on. And another set, well, intra-plateau error says that the opposite, the smallest heuristic value may have h star value, a high h star value, in which case the deterministic tie-breaking may keep expanding the high h value in the same plateau. So in this case, um, there might be a pathological case with these, uh, tra uh, well, the standard tie-breaking. So you want to randomize the behavior within the plateau of uh, defined by h value. So let's show that these are actually orthogonal. Um, we tested IPC domains. An important thing is that we use the same diversification for inter-plateau and intra-plateau. Um, the closest one we could find is type GVFS and the random depth tie breaking. But this the random depth was initially proposed for A star, but we use it for greedy best for search. And inter plateau diversification is sort of uh, random tie breaking. So type GVFS and random depth, and you notice that uh, D is the number of steps from the nearest neighbor or nearest ancestor with the same heuristic value. So all of the G and H and D is in the, in the depth direction of the search space. So here's the result, so these three, these three. Um, I also have the, another variant called um, the combination of random depths and the type GBFS. And the results show that different domains actually requires different uh, diversification mode. And Furthermore, the, with both modes, so diversification modes combined, the effects also combine, which indicates that as a take-home message, whenever you have a certain diversification method, always consider combining them because it always uh, pays off. It's orthogonal. So this is the first half of my presentation. Uh, what's next? So we already argued that the type GVFS and the random depth is all related to the depth dire direction in the search space. So why not diversify the width? Um, the existing diversification all have the pathological cases. So as an example, we use this graph, which has a high branch component and a low branch component. And each of, uh, well, the, in high branch component, the, both of the width and the depth is very large, maybe possib possibly infinite. So what happens the breadth first, uh, so what is the behavior of breadth first search in this graph? So initially this node is expanded and both of L1 and H1 expanded, but there are a huge number of nodes in the second layer of H, which means well, it takes in maybe infinite amount of time to reach to the third layer. What happens in the depth first search? Um, in, the, in this case, although this depends on the successor ordering, in the pathological case, it continues to expand the high B branch, which takes another infinite amount of time. Well, what happens if we use just the randomness? It doesn't solve the problem because, well, we may expand both H1 and L1, but there are huge, well, sorry, there are huge number of nodes in the high branch which means the chance of expanding L2 is very low. And if 
we managed to expand L2 due to the random selection, luckily, there are still a num large number of nodes in the open list that are not in the low B branch. So it takes another uh, very slim chance of expanding L3. Uh, finally, the random depths is managing the depths and diversifies the depths to expand, but even if it, correct, uh, it expand the correct depths, which is four in this case for expanding the goal node, but there are still large number of branch of the nodes in, this, um, in the depth four. So this is a, still a pathological case for all existing di diversification order search strategy, blind search strategy. So here I propose uh, something weird, bond invasion percolation that nobody in this room uh, has heard about, I guess. Uh, this is a well-known fractal structure that was intensively studied in physics. Uh, this is a model for distribution of food slowly invading a porous media, which is, for example, water replacing the oil in the, the porous rock. Um, the, the, the application of this is uh, oil reservoir uh, mining, and yes, so it has some interest in this industry. But that's not the point. Well, at least the physics people use a different term from others, so the bond means edges and the site means node in our terminology. Um, the generation of BIP can be, uh, is a very simple algorithm. So we have init initial node and we push it into the open list and they pop it until it's the open list becomes empty and mark the nodes as visited and the, so if you expand the node there's an edge and the successor and here's the thing, each edge has a unique value and it's initially onset but it's assigned a random value and then push the node with this edge value well, I should note that the, uh, the, the same nose is not never to expanded twice. Um, sorry, uh, I skipped. Uh, this algorithm is shown to be the exactly the same algorithm as the Prim's method for uh, constructing minimum spanning trees on a randomly assigned weight. And the important thing is that this random value is fixed or memorized on each edge and it's never reassigned. And this is critical for the fractal fra structure called uh, embankment effect. So imagine a certain region of a node is surrounded by high valued uh, edges. It forms an embankment because it prevents the invasion inside this uh, region. Um, this, so the fixation of random value maintains this fractal structure and Due to this fixation, it is completely different from just the random heuristics because random heuristics always reassigns a new value to the node. Um, this, uh, the assigning a new node means breaking the embankment each time. So, and this BIP avoids a pathological behavior um, probabilistically. So in the initial node, there's a half the probability that this H1 gets a higher um, edge value than the L1. In this case, in some probability, it can still find the, the L4, which is a goal node, in the lucky case. In the unlucky case, there are still this kind of possibility, but since each edge has a random value, it's still possible that the remaining of the nodes in the high, high B branch becomes an embankment. So it prevents invasion into that uh, subgraph. In this case, it is lucky enough to expand the low, low B node. So here's the evaluation. Um, we compare the performance of uh, this BIP thing and also the depth-based diversification that uh, we see earlier. Um, we have H small b, which uses intra-plateau BIP, and H large b, it's, which uses inter-plateau BIP. Uh, which uses uh, alternation queue and HBB, which is a combination of two, as I claimed before, always use the both modes of diversification. And finally, the ra random desk plus type BGBFS. And the results, well, the, well, the first result is that the, in this problem too, an interplateau and intraplateau orthogonality was observed in different domains. And the, uh, compared to depth-based diversification, 
it is competitive, but the improvements are in different domains. Because we diversify different things, the depth versus the width. Um, in order to under truly understand the BIP's behavior, we plotted the search of a number of nodes in a particular depth. So this is a blind search characteristic, which reduce, uh, showing that it reduces the search width. This matches our description on the pathological cases. Um, I also implemented this uh, BIP thing into the state of our LAMA and uh, in basically improved the performance by using all of the previous methods. DB to DB, which is a little bit complicated, but it always alternates D and B. Um, because they have the different effects, and uh, effects mostly combine and improve drama. Um, this is an extra discussion uh, regarding BW, BFWS sorry, and GBFSW in, by Lipovetsky uh, Triple S17. So these numbers are obtained from their paper, and we observe that similarly, the GBFSW is intra-plateau and GB, G, BFWS is inter-plateau. And it looks orthogonal like the improvements in different domains. So, I believe that the effects are expected to combine with both modes enabled, like, like by alternation Q. So, the, this is the benefit of understanding the diversification behavior in general. As a conclusion, as a, the first one is two modes of diversification and the take home message is whenever you have a diversification, use it in the boss for, for boss modes. The second one is a fractal-based um, BIP diversification for reducing the search width. And take-home message is fractal have a potential. Fractals have a potential. And there are several uh, fractals out there, so we can consider using them. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, so uh, your diversification method, uh, it doesn't look inside the state, right? It's completely, it doesn't use any information from the state, right? It's this, doesn't. Uh, it, it's basically, it, the information is these random numbers that are attached to the edges, right? Yeah. Uh, whereas, for example, the, the novelty kind of thing, uh, it's actually looking inside the state, it's getting some information, right? So, so you think that you could, uh, like, uh, you know, do something like putting the two things together, like doing some kind of fractal based diversification, taking into consideration some information from inside the state or something like that. Well, um, well, maybe that's possible, but you know, the the well, comparing BIP and I, uh, iterative width or the novelty measure. Um, so I I believe. Um, Maybe novelty is stronger because I don't haven't to uh, compare it on the same machine. But um, the the strong strength, one strength of BIP is that it doesn't care since it doesn't care about the internal of our state representation. Maybe we can apply it for the, the continuous domain or any kinds of unknown uh, where in the domains where the state encoding is unknown, like maybe neural network. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's an advantage. Yes, I believe that's an advantage. But, you know, maybe, so I don't know which is better in actually in classical planning. So is there a way of quantifying, I mean, you know, sometimes you only look at the coverage for the number of problems solved, but uh, you don't know exactly what is the real effect, right? I mean, how many, <coughs> maybe, maybe what, what, how do you quantify the real effect of a diversification besides seeing the, the coverage number, right? For example, I don't know, like, uh, for example, it, it, when using the novelty, maybe you could quantify, okay, I, I expanded this node because it was novel, and then I can quantify, I did that many expansions because of <coughs> novelty, right? Maybe, uh, how many expansions <coughs> you do because of the, of the VIP, the tie breaking, right? That maybe it's another way of quantifying the effect. Well, this kind of uh, fractal based approach is more like it's unlike well it's not like some state is better or worse because it doesn't look at the state at itself but it's more like 
um, putting a filter over the entire state space because um, this is a fractal is a characteristic of the entire space itself. Um, well, so um, there's no reason that a certain node is ignored or actually expanded, but um, we can see the global effect like this. So this is uh, the, the number of nodes for each, each depth in the search. So x-axis is the depth and y is the number of nodes. Yes. So do you have examples where certain fractals work better for certain domains? Or I don't know if you have any insight about that. Well, actually, this one is only one, uh, one fractal. Um, but uh, I have a clue at, well, actually, the hypothesis. So each fractal, uh, you know, the ma math people are doing a lot of research on the fractal dimension. And the uh, different problem has a different graph. And the graph has a, also has a fractal dimension, and the goal nodes also have a fractal dimension, and so on. And maybe we hope to um, the customize the, the fractal behavior for each problem, something like that I, is what I'm thinking about. D dimension is a real value for a graph. Sorry. Okay, uh, we need to move on. Thank you.